To the students, to our board chair, to faculty and staff, alumni, my fellow board of trustee members, past and present, uh, family and friends, uh, it is a distinct privilege to welcome you to the inauguration of Trinity Christian College's ninth president, Reverend Dr. Aaron J. Keeker. My name is Christian Perry, and you guys got to bear with me because uh, this, is, this is my good friend here, so I'm going to try to keep my composure and not do the waterworks for you all. Um, there's a song that I'm engaging with currently uh, by Forrest Frank, uh, and I'll give you the lyrics. It says, turning all things new, gray skies blue, hearing the church saying, won't he do it? I know he's got my back. That's why I'm singing that I'm about to have a good day in every single way. The God who made the universe knows me by my name, so it's a good day. And today, y'all, is a very, very good day. <laughs> to say that I'm honored uh, and deeply proud to be a part of this moment uh, with my brother, whom I love deeply uh, and admire, would be an understatement. As a student, former alumni board president, and now is the youngest member of the board of trustees, I've had a front row seat for the last 10 years of Trinity's life. So I can say with a great deal of certainty that through every up and every down that this community has experienced over the better part of the last decade, there has been a wise, humble, tireless servant given their all to ensure not only the success of this institution, but it's longevity. And that humble servant who is uniquely qualified is president to be Aaron Keeker. You can clap for that. Yeah. That is a gift. Um, and our faith teaches us a, two, a thing or two about gifts. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4 and 7 says, what do you have that you did not receive. Friends, each and every one of us today are evidence of God's goodness, God's giftedness, his creativity. This community, this leader, and this moment are worthy of deep gratitude. Because if not for our Lord and Savior, this day would not be possible. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this momentous occasion that you've allowed for all of us to partake in. Father God, we thank you for the Trinity Christian College community. God, we thank you for what Trinity means to the world, what Trinity means to students past and present. God, we thank you for what you've called us to do here on this day. God, we particularly offer up great thanks for your servant, Dr. Aaron Keeker, Father God. We thank you for his steadfastness. God, we thank you for his vision. We thank you for his innovative spirit, Father God, his heart for people. And God, we ask that you continue to strengthen him, lead him and guide him. Give him the wisdom that only you can provide, Father God, to continue to set Trinity on a path toward greatness, sustainability, and impact. God, we thank you for this very, very good day, for being such a good father to us and loving us well. And it is in your son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please rise and join us in song.
Christian College, I am delighted to welcome you to the inauguration of Reverend Dr. Aaron J. Keeker. I am extremely happy for this moment. An inauguration marks both a moment of transition and a continuation of legacy for an institution. At Trinity, we celebrate this inauguration by thanking God for 65 years of God's faithfulness to this community, right now. That faithfulness is evident in the lives of our students, past and present, our staff, our faculty, our trustees, our friends, our families, our neighbors, and our partners, past, present, and future. Each of you here today are part of God's larger story of faithfulness to this community. As we acknowledge, as we celebrate the legacy of leadership into which President Keeker has entered, we offer a special welcome today for, to our students. You are the ones for whom we do this all for. And to our alumni, uh, including the classes of 73 and 74 who are celebrating their 50th class reunion right now with us. And joining us on the platform today is a past president who has been part of shaping this Trinity community. Steve Timmermans is in the house. <laughs> Steve, would you please rise? <laughs> uh, 
Steve uh, served as the in the Trinity community from 2003 to 2014 and led the development of Trinity's first master's program, the SALT program, and the construction of the DeVos Gymnasium and Art and Communication Center. <laughs> President Timmermans was also responsible for the hiring of an incredible professor of New Testament theology by the name of Dr. Aaron Keeker. Please join me in giving thanks to President Timmermans and our past presidents unable to join us today for their faithful leadership. And now, it's my distinct privilege to introduce to you today the ninth president of Trinity Christian College. Reverend Dr. Aaron J. Keeker. <laughs> president Keeker stepped into the role of interim president in 2022 and the permanent role of president in 2023 after serving as Trinity's provost since 2016. Prior to his time as provost, Aaron served as associate professor of theology and director of general education from 2008 to 2013. In the intervening years, he served at Letourneau University in Texas as dean of the School of Theology and Vocation, professor of theology, and director of the Honors College. With a PhD in New Testament studies from the University of St. Andrews in Scotland, and seven years of service in pastoral ministry, Aaron has brought to Trinity a wide and abundant view of God's world. Throughout his tenure, he has led significant and innovative changes to Trinity's general education curriculum, economic and financial models, academic calendar, vocational formation work, and more. Aaron led the development of the Wellbeing Wednesdays initiative, opening up Wednesdays for students to decide what they needed to be well. He launched the Tuition Transparency and Access Initiative, aimed at creating a more realistic, accessible, and transparent financial model for students. And Aaron was integral in the development of the Earn, Network, and Learn initiative an initiative that has opened up the institution toward partnerships of mutual good that grant students access to vocational formation and avenues to pay for college that reduce reliance on student loan debt. He has inspired the college to think differently about time, about money, and about partnerships in a way that more fully and wholly reflects God's kingdom for the flourishing of students. In my time as board chair, I have experienced firsthand the ways Aaron views life, the world, higher ed Christian education, and what his faith means to him. Aaron is a man of faith, anchored in the word of God. His faith guides him in every way. We are blessed to have a man who faithfully gives leadership that is rooted deeply in his relationship with our God. Aaron is a strong leader, strong academic. He's a pastor and a visionary. And he's really good at communicating his vision for our college. And on top of all that, he's not afraid to invite others to participate in this vision by giving financial support. That's awesome. <laughs> so, what I wanted you to know about this man is we've gotten to know each other real well. We've become very good friends. Uh, we got together almost weekly for the last few years until about six months ago when things got too busy. And the one thing I want you to know about 
Aaron is he loves this place. And his desire to see this place thrive and to be healthy and to be oriented to the God that created us, that's what his heart's about. Now, normally at an inauguration, you bring a, a new guy in and then you hope for the best. We know him. And for that, I am so thankful. So, today we celebrate God's provision for this place. And it is an honor for me to have gotten to know Aaron, to serve with him, and to be part of this process. Now, I would like to invite forward incoming board chair, Ken Dreifout, for the presentation and investiture of the Presidential Medallion. It is my joy and privilege on behalf of the Board of the Trustees to inaugurate Trinity's ninth president. We are here today to install Reverend Dr. Aaron J. Keeker as president of Trinity Christian College. God in his providence has brought us to this date and to this time. And today, we officially confirm the board's action of Aaron's installation as president. Aaron, would you join me at the podium? Aaron, the presidency of Trinity Christian College requires steadfast, steadfast faith in Christ, vision of God's abundant world, generosity of gift, humility for partnership, and a wisdom of leadership. We have seen in you God's gifting and equipping for such a time as this. The medallion we present today is a symbol of your part in God's larger story here at Trinity Christian College. This medallion carries on it the inscription, one God in three, we praise you. Today, we praise God for you, for the gift of your leadership, and for this place, for the gift of community. May God bless you, Aaron J. Keeker, as you continue in this legacy of faithfulness to Trinity through your leadership as president. Thank you for answering this call. At this time, I'd like to invite to the stage Reverend Dr. Victoria White for the keynote address. Victoria is an author, teacher, and pastor, serving as the Managing Director of Grants and Awards at Leadership Education at Duke Divinity. Victoria cultivates and supports innovative Christian institutions and their leaders. She believes in the power of networks and their role in community flourishing. Victoria is also a collaborator co-creator and partner in holy friendship with Aaron. Please welcome to the stage, Reverend Dr. Victoria White. Thank you, Mr. Dreyfout, for your introduction. Newly inducted President Keeker, members of the Board of Trustees, past presidents, Faculty, staff, students, alumni, and treasured Trinity partners, thank you for having me today. I bring you greetings from your friends and partners in God's good work at Leadership Education, Duke Divinity School, and Duke University. And as someone who deeply loves her state of North Carolina, I thank you for your prayers for our state and our people. It is truly an honor to be with you here in this historic moment in the life and bright future of Trinity Christian College. I remember the Zoom call that Dr. Keeker and I were on a few years ago when he told me he'd been invited to serve as the interim president of Trinity Christian College. I remember thinking, okay, Victoria, you need to fix your face because my first thought was, why on earth 
would you do that? <laughs> I knew from his work as a professor and provost that Dr. Keeker loved Trinity, and he really enjoyed the faculty, staff, and students, but I needed to fix my face because I don't know how many presidents of colleges and universities you have met, but they don't tend to be the most happy, fulfilled, joyful, or creative leaders. You've seen those memes of someone on their first day of work and it's a picture of really cute baby Yoda and then a picture of them of, on their last day of work and it's old, dried up, shriveled, almost dead Yoda. That's how I see a lot of university and college presidents except the old Yoda picture is not on their last day of work, it's on like their second or third. I was worried about my dear friend taking on a job that I was fairly certain would age him, stress him out, push his capacities, make his hair turn gray, oh wait a minute, sorry, scratch that one. <laughs> but you get the idea. Working in higher education in the United States today is not for the faint of heart. The message from most college administrations is similar. It is a refrain summarized by one word, scarcity. We don't have enough students. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough staff. We don't have enough time. Society doesn't value a college education enough. And so I asked Aaron some questions about how he saw his gifts and his experience contributing to Trinity as president. And what he said left me speechless. He said, I'm very clear, I don't want to follow a path like so many other college and university presidents I know. I think what I bring to this season of Trinity is a different way of seeing the work. I know there's a lot of scarcity. Most of it is real, some of it is perceived, and all of it is terrifying. But I'm also clear that I'm entering a story that's been going on for generations. He said, Trinity has a role to play as part of God's constantly changing and unfolding love story with creation. And because we are a part of that much bigger story, that means we can lean into the traditions of scripture that bear witness to the fact that God always gives God's people what they need for life, and faithfulness in their current moment. He continued, I root my leadership in God's faithfulness, so I have to trust that there is always enough gift. My job as Trinity's president is going to be to help us have the eyes to see the gifts, the courage to name them, and the vision of the resurrection in order to faithfully receive them. Now, you might be wondering at this point, how on earth did she remember all of this of a conversation that she had with him years ago? Great question. I would love to tell you. I took copious notes while he was talking because I had never heard a college administrator talk the way Aaron was talking. He was literally re-envisioning college presidential leadership. He went on to say, I have a hunch that we see scarcity because that is all our eyes are trained to see. What if we're missing the abundance in the system because we are focused inwardly rather than on the possibilities that exist in the wider ecosystem? And I knew he was on to something. What if? A few weeks later, in another conversation, he picked up the same topic, and this time he gave the example of a forest where nothing lives alone, but that the way God sustains creation is through a complex web of connectedness and giving and receiving. What if the same is true for our institutions, he mused. What might happen if we could train our eyes to make visible the invisible gifts around us to better receive God's abundance in ways that truly sustain us, our mission, and our neighbors? 
And with that reasoning and those questions, I realized President Keeker was not going to be a typical college president. The main reason I knew his presidency would be different is because the way he explained he was looking at the neighborhood around Trinity and potential Chicago partners and friends of Trinity that just didn't know they were friends of Trinity yet wasn't a new idea to Dr. Keeker. It wasn't the well-crafted answer he had prepared for the trustee board in an interview. His way of thinking is consistent with the way he has always done his work. It is the way he has always seen the world, at least for as long as I've known him. In fact, I went back into the archives of when Aaron and I first met at Duke University when he participated in a senior leadership program. He had to submit a writing sample, and so I dug it up. <laughs> Almost 10 years ago, he wrote about he and his family raking leaves in his yard. An endless and thankless task that seems to go on for weeks each fall, beginning very soon. And he ponders why it is that we rake our leaves when if we just left them there, they would eventually rot and turn into the exact kind of nutrients the soil needs to grow grass or flowers or vegetables or weeds, whatever it is that your yard produces. And he further reflected, in other seasons, we pay a lot of money for bags of chemical fertilizers to increase the nutrients in our soil when nature, the trees, give us exactly what the soil needs to replenish itself in the falling leaves. Do you hear what he's saying? We are given this literally perfect fertilizer in the form of autumn's leaves, everything that the soil needs, but society has told us that's not the way that we do things. The leaves are not what we need. They get in the way of our Pinterest perfect images of our manicured green lawns. They don't look tidy or orderly. There's too much abundance and we cannot bear it all. So rather than receive the gift that nourishes the soil and provides for all living things, we rake them. And even if they are the right fertilizer for our soil, we think it takes too long for them to break down and become what we need for them to be, so we rake them and we discard the very nutrients, and then in the next season, we buy chemical-formed nutrients in bagged fertilizer to help the ground spring forth life. He then asked the question, is this a story of radical abundance? of a cycle of gift, of the kind of self-donation that looks like death, but sustains life itself? And who gets to decide if these leaves should be gathered and removed or welcomed and celebrated and returned to the soil? These themes of gift and abundance and resurrection and generosity and connection and cooperation are central to who President Keeker is. As a child of God, a New Testament scholar, a professor, a leader, a father, a spouse, and a friend. And thanks be to God, he lives into these themes on a daily basis because in his leadership, he has helped guide Trinity in the face of real scarcity because he does not shy away from the very real fragility that is prevalent throughout higher education and is even present on this campus. But in the face of scarcity, he fights against the very real natural inclination to turn inward and hunker down and fiercely protect what is ours at all costs. No, instead, because of who God has created him to be, time and time again, President Keeker looks outward with a spirit of generosity and conviction, a deeply rooted, old, old story of God's faithfulness. And he asks questions like, Given all the abundance that is out there in our neighborhood, our community, our city, our state, our world, what is our gift to bring? 
Instead of clenching his hands tight to hold on to what Trinity has, he opens his arms to what God so graciously gives because he knows, as the 1 Corinthians 4 text says, what do you have that you did not receive? We have received it all. It is all gift, and there is more than enough if we just have eyes to see it. And you are seeing it because you are living it. The Transformative Colleges Initiative and the hyper-local approach Trinity has in strengthening the connections is evidence of how all of you are living into a new way of seeing the world, of knowing that your good is wrapped up in the good of your neighbor. You are seeing the miracle and the mystery of God revealed as what was invisible becomes visible. And what was unknown not only becomes known, but embraced and treasured and welcomed. You are living in a season where Trinity is seeing that the leaves that will soon fall in all their abundance are in fact exactly what is needed in their season. Because we serve a God who in all God's faithfulness always provides for God's people. And here's the really good news. This is not just a good word for the occasion of President Keeker's inauguration. This is the good news of Trinity in its 65 years of excellence in higher education. Because you see, this way of seeing gift and opportunity and abundance and connection and generosity in the world has been woven into the DNA of Trinity from its very inception. I found the convocation speech that Dr. Cal Searveld, professor of philosophy, gave in September of 1960, when Trinity celebrated its second fall semester of welcoming students. There were 87 students at the time, up from only 37 in its very first year. Things have changed a bit. Dr. Searveld said this, the central thrust of Trinity Christian College, which sets it apart from the usual run of the Middle West liberal arts colleges is this. We study everything because we live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And since God has spoken and speaks here, there, and everywhere in the world, it is our privilege, it is God's command to search through all the areas of creation, all the varied aspects of human activity. Nothing of God's playground is off limits. It is our task to see the wonders of God's almighty work and enjoy the discoveries with childlike surprise, day in and day out, forever. Did you hear that, Trinity? From your birth, as an institution of higher learning, specifically built in this place for this season, you have been given all of God's playground. Nothing is off limits. It is your task to see the wonders of God's work, to see the invisible and make it visible, and enjoy the discoveries with childlike surprise, day in and day out, forever. So my question is, to you, President Keeker, on this day of celebration of your inauguration, and to you, Trinity Christian College, on your 65th anniversary, what do you see and where do you want to play next? Thank you. Please join us in prayer. Gracious, holy, and eternal God, our Father, 
We thank you once again for the privilege of approaching your throne. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are. We thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all you're yet going to do. Today we pause and take this time to say thank you. Thank you for the honor of being a part of this amazing place and this amazing occasion as we celebrate this amazing human being. Thank you for your extreme love, for your gracious kindness, for your warm, gentle, tender mercies that you continually bestow upon us. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. You are trustworthy and true. You're faithful to your word, faithful to your creation, and you have been faithful to Trinity Christian College. Today we thank you as we celebrate 65 years of your divine faithfulness towards this place. And in response to your faithfulness, we understand that as your servants, it is incumbent upon us to also be found faithful. And so we thank you for the years of faithful service from all those who have to date answered the call to serve in this place. We thank you for their sacrifices and their willingness to persevere. For this is the true meaning of faithfulness. Lord, we live in a culture that sees this role as an elite position to gain power and influence. But we, your servants, understand that it is actually a call to service, a vocation that requires courage, humility, commitment, perseverance, dedication, compassion, and sacrifice. One in which we reject our will and embrace yours. As noted by the saint Dietrich Bonhoeffer, when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. No one understands this more clearly than you, Lord Jesus. Your faithfulness to the restoration of your creation cost you your life. And you willingly pay the sacrificial price to restore your creation back to its proper fellowship within the life-giving creation uh, relational order. And so I pray for President Keeker, strength. I pray that you endow him with divine courage to be faithful to the call. Oftentimes, Father, this faithfulness calls for hard decisions that sometimes mean being misunderstood. And so I pray when he feels lonely or discouraged, that, you, that your comforting presence will surround him like a blanket. I pray when the days are long and the nights are short, or vice versa, that you grant him divine strength and endurance to hold on. When he feels confused or conflicted regarding important decisions, I pray for divine insight on the route you'll have him to take. And if he falters, I pray that your precious proddings will gently lead him back onto your path. I pray that we as a faith community will surround and support him as he faithfully carries out your call. I ask that you open supernatural doors of favor that cannot be closed and close any door that may have been opened against him. I pray blessings of favor on his family as they so graciously share him with the community and the world. May he lead in a way that pleases you and may his life forever be impacted by his willingness to answer the call. Finally, may Trinity Christian College become a bright and shining light that properly bears your name another 65 years. May she be a testament of the faithfulness of the triune God. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for President Keeker and allowing him to embody you. Lord, we want to utilize this time to not only thank President Keeker, but what you are doing through him. On behalf of the students, we are honored to have President Keeker is our ninth president. 
And we are honored to allow you to lead through him so that he may lead us. So that this campus may lead in the direction that you have us to go. So that we may abide in your will and your way only when society tells us otherwise. Lord, on behalf of the students, I ask that you continue to guide us in our challenges, that you touch our hearts, that you convict us through the hallways, that you fill us with your love in places unseen and seen, Lord Jesus, that you allow us to see your abundance in everything that we do. Lord, purify and transform our hearts to realize that this is an opportunity to be here. This is an opportunity to pursue something greater, bigger than ourselves. So as we do our assignments, exams, discussion posts, touch our hearts and realize that this is an opportunity of, of gratitude, that we have the opportunity to glorify you through our calling and vocation. Lord, allow us to realize that this, this is our worship. Every single day we have the opportunity to wake up. Allow us to see your glory through it all, through the breath in our lungs, through the small things, Lord. You are abundant. You are merciful. You deserve all glory and praise. Allow us to fellowship with one another, with our peers, our faculty, our professors. Touch our hearts every single day and allow us to realize that we have a gift in front of us. Our president is leading our campus in the right direction and he is going to continue to lead us in the right direction. We thank you for the small gifts, the opportunities, the challenges, the storms in our life and we hold them dear and close to our hearts for they are a great testament and builder of character. Lord, we need you, and allow us to always rely on you. When all else fails and when all things are, are shiny and golden, Lord, we need you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for entrusting Dr. Aaron Kicker with the mission of leading us in pursuing Christian education for all. His many years serving this community, first as a professor, then as a provost, and now as president, have proven to be a blessing for Trinity. His willingness to work with all people, optimism, and leadership have been crucial in developing our community and overcoming trials and adversities. He always has a smile for all. He works for unity in our diversity. He reconciles all things in our Lord Jesus Christ. On behalf of Trinity's faculty, we humbly ask you to provide him with your Holy Spirit so he can be the leader we need, and more importantly, the leader you expect him to be. Give him the wisdom to guide us. Give him love to care for all members of our community, and give him courage to pursue and promote the truth among us. Give him faithfulness to remember there is no salvation apart from you and to bring us all closer to you. We ask you all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good afternoon. My name is Leah Fulton and I get to serve here at Trinity as Vice President for Student Life. And if you're here today, you've personally encountered or you've heard about Aaron's Heart for Connection, um, it is so important to him that it's the driving principle of his vision for the college. Um, and it even informed the timing of today's festivities. Um, I got to listen to President Keeker talk about his desire to prioritize the life and health of the college, to see uh, a college full of people who are connected to God, connected to one another, connected to neighbors and to partners. 
So much so that he postponed an inauguration because he wanted the life of the college to be the priority and not himself. So that really is just a reflection of his commitment to students and, and to Trinity as a whole. So this afternoon, in true academic fashion, we have the opportunity to bring you some um, primary sources in the form of reflections from members of the community, students, faculty, and staff, um, who've shared about how they have experienced Aaron's care for people and his commitment to connection. So allow me to share some of those with you. Aaron leads with joy and hopefulness that is contagious to a campus community. His Christian faith is evident in his consistent focus on treating all with dignity and respect and seeing the best in all of us. It's an honor to serve with and learn from Aaron. Aaron has been a breath of fresh air to the Trinity community. Not only has he led carefully and strategically um, in, in guiding the college, um, but has also put students, faculty, and staff at the center of his forward thinking. He cares deeply for this community, and most importantly, he cares about the ways that this community is a picture of Christ and the church working to bring redemption to all areas of creation through our individual and collective work. Maybe here's a more personal story, not for me, but in the way this person describes it. Aaron has a remarkable gift for vision casting. Within my first few interactions with him, I was completely bought in on the futures of both Trinity and higher education as a whole in the way that he has in mind. But what's really incredible about his gift is not only his vision or the ways in which he presents it and brings parties from all walks of life to the table to buy in, but his heart for students can be impacted by it. Students are central to everything that Aaron does in his role as president, and his commitment to seeing students succeed and, drive, and thrive is the driver for all that he moves forward. It's a thrill to be part of that story. I met Aaron just before he went to Letourneau and thought, rats. I wish I could have kept working with him. It's a great line. <laughs> So I was thrilled that he returned to Trinity to continue to share his joy and passion for learning with our students, faculty, and staff. He has boldly asked questions that make others tremble, such as, what would happen if we changed the class schedule to make room for wellness? Or, what would happen if we sought tuition transparency? And then, just as boldly as he's brought people together to make those changes, Aaron, thank you for your courage and fearlessness. We prayed for a provost, and God gave us a pastor, a theologian, a mighty visionary for our time. Praise God for Dr. Keeker. President Keeker has always had a unique ability to champion new, unconventional ways of thinking while making everyone feel seen, heard, and valued in the process. His encouragement of disruptive ideas and innovation has been a source of strength and inspiration to our department, giving us space to experiment, to challenge assumptions, and reframe opportunities. He's cultivated an, an environment where authenticity thrives, and that's a gift for all of us, especially our students. I have just a couple more, and then I'm going to hand it over. Over the past few years, I've been in awe how President Keeker embodies the invitational heart of God. The ways he cares about students and runs his leadership teams do not make it hard to imagine a high God who is generous, proximate, and loving beyond what we deserve. When I think of President Keeker, I think of Ephesians 4. He is humble and gentle, bears with people in love, and pursues unity above all else. I'm eternally grateful to have spent time with a leader who seeks to become more like Jesus and time and time again has championed my success as a student. President Keeker consistently shows compassion for his students in daily interactions, genuinely wanting to see every troll thrive and succeed at Trinity. This is my last one here. There's others. This is just a, a selection of what people shared. You're probably like, okay, we're ready to be done with this part. <laughs> Enjoy every second. <laughs> President Keeker really is a leader worth following. 
you can tell that he truly cares for Trinity and for students. We're so fortunate to have him in this role and look forward to what God will do through his leadership. Aaron's commitment to be a leader who connects people to one another, problems to solutions, and the gospel to the biggest challenges in higher education, all of those things are evident in these reflections from members of the Trinity community. And I'm gonna pass it off to Janine for the next part in our program. Well, today, I think probably you have heard some themes. And one of those themes I think you've heard has been around connection and about God's goodness. God's goodness to and through this community, through the people of this community, through our students, staff, faculty, through every one of you sitting here, but most particularly through President Keeker. And now if you've spent time with President Keeker, whether a lot or a little, you've probably heard a couple of themes come up in conversations. Just to name two, one that we've named well here today is his heart for our students and their flourishing. The other is nature facts. And you, we have heard a theme of nature today as well, but if you spend time with him, you'll actually hear the way in which God's world and nature has really informed for him his vision of this world, of our interconnectedness, of abundance and generosity, um, and the leadership that he brings to this place and the ways in which he's called us to embody that as an institution, as a connected institution pursuing the good for our students. And so on a day like today, with that gift that he has offered us, we wanted to offer him a gift on behalf of the Trinity community. It's a gift that really reflects that vision that he's brought to life here. And so we have commissioned a piece uh, by one of our very own students, our senior studio art major, Hope McIntosh. Right? Yes. Incredibly gifted Hope McIntosh. Um, and it's a beautiful image of a mosaic of Aaron's leadership. I'm gonna ask Katie to come out and actually, it's that thing that's been standing there that you're like, what is behind this? Um, and I'm gonna read actually a description of this painting that was created uh, as a gift for you, Erin, from Trinity, done by uh, one of our students. So this is a description of this incredibly gorgeous piece. Connection, by Hope McIntosh. Connection, what does this mean? How are we all connected? What does it mean to be connected? These were the thoughts in my mind as I began this painting for President Keeker. As I began brainstorming with others, I was challenged to think about how God's creation is all connected and how God has given us everything that we need. This began me thinking about ecosystems and creation, about trees and roots and rhizome mushrooms and invisible strings. John 15 came to mind as well as a memory of when President Keeker spoke on this chapter during the student leadership training a few years ago and how it stayed with me. This painting has many layers, representing the underlying connections and invisible strings that are present but not always seen. This painting holds a silent image of a tree which is only seen when sought out. This painting resembles a mosaic or a stained glass window or a puzzle, showing that we're all connected to one another. Connection, it surrounds us all. We're all connected in God's perfect kingdom. Um, I just want to say Hope McIntosh is just an incredible gift to this community. She not only is the artist behind this piece, she's also the one behind the slides that you're looking at. She's in the back with us. And I, if we could just give her just a round of applause for her gifts. really is such a beautiful representation of uh, God's world, and uh, we're grateful, very grateful. So it is now my honor and privilege to welcome up our newly minted president, um, someone that I know I and we all feel really grateful to journey alongside of, President Aaron Keeker.
Wow. Uh, there is um, this sweet little line at the very end of the Gospel of John where uh, John says, there's a lot of other things that Jesus said and did, and if we were to write them all, there wouldn't be room in the books enough in this world. I kind of feel that way about the words of gratitude I'd like to share at this moment, which is if I were to say them all, you would be here for far too long. Um, and, you know, one of the, my favorite things to do actually in the roles that I've had the privilege to serve in is actually to be on stage and to actually point to others. That's one of the best things about leadership is you get a kind of high uh, view of all the gifts that are all around you. So I love to be able to point and see folks sitting out there like Tim and Carl and Mary Lynn and name it. And so uh, to quote my oldest son who can't be here today, it's a bit uncomfy today for me. It's a bit uncomfy. But just a few things briefly. First, thank yous to my family, Carrie and Izzy and Addie, my parents, my in-laws. That'll happen a few times. Thank you so much to Trinity faculty and staff. Gosh, we've worked together for a long time now. <laughs> a lot of years of shared mission, and you are a gifted, remarkably gifted, and remarkably kind group of Christian leaders. And the chance to keep trying this together is a pretty good chance. So thank you for that. To our board of trustees for gritty, I think gritty is a good word, visionary, dedicated, really, really generous leadership. Everyone, you should know that Trinity has a board of trustees that has served with depth of soul. Depth of soul. Oh, to Reverend Dr. Victoria White, my holy friend. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. If I could be one-tenth of what you described right there, I'd be feeling good about myself. Thank you for the gift of teaching me so much about leadership over these years, about friendship. Thank you. Hey, Trinity students, of course, you're the reason we do this. You are the reason we do this. You are the reason that we're here. It's your gifts, and it's the fact that the way God works in this world is to keep bringing new people with new gifts and ideas yet to be explored and configurations that we haven't yet known to come to a place like this to let all of that unfold. You're the reason that we're here. So I feel so thankful for you and to you. All that you are becoming, what this college does is for you. It's for you. It's truly for you. To our partners and our neighbors and our friends, oh my goodness, we need each other. Boy, do we need each other. We need each other so much, and we're on a pathway to live in a more connected way into the abundance of God's kingdom. So let's keep seeing what we can just do together. Let's just keep doing that. Um, to hope, oh my goodness, hope. You are, can someone please clap for hope? That is... Amazing. And I was in a meeting earlier this week where someone was walking through with me this ceremony and they were showing me the map of the stage and they wouldn't take their thumb off of the corner of the map and now I know why. That was there. So good job, Janine. That was excellently done. Yeah. Uh, above all, do you know, I give thanks to God as we all do, whose mercies are new every morning. If you just think about that phrase for a second, to God whose mercies every morning are new, renewed, new mercies every morning, each day new, each day graced, each day a chance to begin again with each other, with our work before God. Each day is an inauguration. God's mercies are inaugurated every morning. God's mercies, the tenderness, the love of God that stitches us together, inaugurated every morning. That word inauguration is kind of a weird one. We only use it every once in a while. We use it in really fraught ways these days, actually. Uh, there was a lot of contention about inaugurations. You may have noticed a little bit. If you uh, have the opportunity to spend some time in a, in a biblical studies classroom, you know that word inauguration shows up from time to time to talk about the beginning of something that's not yet done shows up to talk about the inauguration of God's kingdom. That when Jesus Christ is raised from the dead and ascended to the right hand of the Father, that God's kingdom, this promise of life and peace and sharing and goodness was inaugurated. It was begun. 
but not finished. It was begun, and begun in a way that you and I and all of us students were invited into that. In places like Trinity, the reason they can be special places in the world is there beca- it's because they're one of many little islands of God's inaugurating mercy. Here, little glimpses of what it's like to be in God's world of goodness and love and light and life. Not perfectly. You all know that it's not perfect. We don't even hardly need to say that. But these are places of inaugurated mercy. And when we together, and I mean all of us, I don't just mean the president, when we together get to steward them for the season that we have, it's a pretty big gift. It's a pretty big gift. Because these are places of tremendous transformation. So fun to be with the 50th uh, reunion class and just think a little bit about how you might track the tremendous transformation, the unfolding of precious human lives that happens here. The way that that happens when you work here, the way it happens when you study here. Places of tremendous opportunity where new things can come to be in God's world. Places of incredible relationship where we learn what it means to be friends, how we love, how we forgive. Goodness, we need to forgive how we do that. And places of hope where each day we get little glimpses, shimmering glimpses if we have eyes to see of the fact that God has not left us alone, but we are here together And it's a gift to work with you, I think, to steward this place as we journey towards being a Christian learning community where in light light of the big story that God is writing us into, we get to do our work of teaching and learning and research and serving and knowing and caring inside of life-bringing structures that are good for us, good for our students, good for our partners, good for our world. So I felt really grateful, actually, these last couple of years to be in a place where we've been willing to think together about, well, what does it mean for God's world to really be abundant when it doesn't feel like it? What does it mean for God's world to truly be connected when it feels like anything but that at the moment? What does it mean for this world to be made for cooperation and not get ahead first competition? What does it mean for this world to be built for generosity and not for transaction? So thank you for coming on a journey of imperfectly trying to figure out what it means to do that here, to figure out that if we try to live generously with time, if we try to live cooperatively with partners, with institutional friends, if we recognize the interconnectedness even of our economies, that together, as a little glimmer of God's inaugurated mercy, we can find islands of hope here, just here. We can start to solve some of the community and student damaging problems that are inside of higher ed, but that are just inside our world, that we can go to work on ending the assumption that debt is the way students that we pay for college, that we can go to work on creating structures that really get ahead of what it means to flourish and have well-being, that we can really think with partners about what if friendship is always supposed to be mutually good and not just one way. And all of this Christian structural work is in service, you know, of opening the doors wider to Trinity and to places like that. Because, you know, when we see the incredible transformation, students, that happens in our lives while we're here, the trajectory of transformation this begins, the opportunity that unfolds before us, the relationships we get to enjoy when we see the hope that your lives and work bear witness to in our midst. Students, your lives bear witness to a profound hope in this world. Well, we just want the doors open wider and the structures better and more humane and the partnerships more mutual and what we do to be more reflective of God's world. So as we continue to work for that deep good, uh, I'll ask for some help. If you've been around me, you know I need it. I'll ask for some help. Uh, Students, partners, faculty, and staff, hey students, would you keep helping us learn what serves you well? I'm not joking when I say we're here for you and because of you and with you and for you. So help us know what serves you well. Uh, Risk trying new things when we put them out there in front of you, risk it with us. You have amazing gifts and your gifts are needed. Needed. You are needed. 
colleagues teach and shepherd and serve along with me and let's try to do it as best we can in the way of Jesus. Help us keep learning to look outward beyond ourselves, to know that life is always outside of us. It comes to us as a gift from God and God's world. We don't have all we need. We need what God gives us. Let's try and learn and laugh and forgive. Your gifts, colleagues, are needed. Your gifts are needed. Partners, friends, friends of mine, partners of the college, thanks for coming. Oh my gosh. Let's see how we can be better for our communities. Whether we partner institutionally or, institutionally or whether we partner as friends, let's see how we can be better for our communities when we align our gifts. So join us in cultivating an ecosystem of hope and mutuality and generosity. Let's figure out how to do that together. That sounds fun to me. Let's figure out how we create solutions to big problems and the kinds of problems that harm people. Let's do that together. Hey, and last, would you just pray for Trinity, for me, for this work, for all who work here, for all who study here? Would you pray for this place? It is a moment of really remarkable opportunity challenge, and challenge. Those things almost always, students, those almost always go together, opportunity and challenge. There are very few seasons in life that are unbroken opportunity or unbroken challenge. They almost always go right next to each other. So, in the midst of that, let's figure out what it means to walk towards opportunity. But to do that, we will need to pray that God, God himself, who gives generously, would give us the eyes to see the gifts that are around us, to see the gifts in one another, to receive those gifts, to connect them, to catalyze them, to invite more and more people into the pull of their goodness, to open our eyes to see, as my friend Christian started us off, hey, that there's nothing, St. Paul says, there's nothing we have. There's nothing we have that we have not received. So I give thanks to God for that. Uh, thank you, everybody. What a weird day to be a part of, just to be honest with you. I feel grateful, I feel humbled, feel at home, and I feel ready for us to do this work together on behalf of God and God's world and for the sake of one another. So thank you so much, Trinity Christian College, for being here to celebrate and come for what's next at 3 o'clock and at 4.30. And tomorrow night, we would love to have you with us. Amen and thanks be to God. Friends, Aaron has asked us to pray, and we will do that right now, but we will do that day after day, all the more as we see God's work happening among us. We live by faith. God always provides for God's people to accomplish God's mission, so let's go together to God in prayer. Would you pray with me? Almighty and eternal God, Father, Son, and Spirit, God in Trinity, you have brought us to this place and brought Aaron Keeker to lead us. Today we have made formal what you have already done by making Aaron our leader. As we begin this chapter of our life together, we come humbly to your presence, seeking your blessing for our college president, for our campus community, and for our shared mission. Through you, all things are made. Before you, every generation rises and falls. In you, we have life and the light of all mankind. You are our ever-present help. We ask that we might receive. We pray that the abundance of your grace and strength and truth and love be poured out upon Aaron and those who counsel him in the days ahead. Pour out your Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove and burning as fire for his ministry. Do in him incredibly more than all we could ever ask or imagine. Bless him with vision for the future 
and wisdom to lead in the present. Sustain him when the tasks of leadership are lonely, when the obstacles are many and the destination is hidden. We pray that his heart would align with yours, that his mind would capture your vision, that his strength would be your strength. We pray for partners in ministry, wise and gifted leaders to step forward, that your vision might be accomplished through the community of faith for your glory. Begin a new work in your spirit here now, Lord, for the harvest is plentiful, but the workers feel few. Bless our campus, Lord, with your ongoing presence. Unite us in love and mission. Train our eyes to see your abundance. Show us the invisible things that last. Sustain our entire system, faculty, staff, students, and friends. Make beautiful things and make us stewards of them. We wait on you, Lord. Renew the leaders of this campus. Give them a portion of your power. Lift up those who have been pushed down by the burdens of leadership. Raise up new leaders for your church who will lead us in business and art and healthcare and education and social service. Lead us not in temptation, Lord, but deliver us from the lies of the division and scarcity that breeds fear. Give us daily bread and a generous spirit to care for brothers and sisters that we might seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. May your kingdom come and your will be done here at Trinity Christian College as it is in heaven. We pray this in the name of Christ who is our Savior and all God's people said, amen. People of faith, there is much to celebrate. If you're able, would you stand with us and sing of the goodness of God?
joining us for this very special occasion of the inauguration of our president, Dr. Aaron Keeker. We're so grateful for your presence here today, and we're so very grateful for your support of Trinity. Thank you for being here. The celebration continues afterward. Following our recessional, please join us for a reception in the Grand Lobby. And as well, we invite you to join us in this very same space at 3 p.m. for a story sharing session with neighborhood partners to hear about the good work taking place here at Trinity for the good of our students. For our recessional, a word about our recessional, after the benediction, if you would, please remain standing. Uh, and then <clears throat> what will take place is the platform party, the staff and faculty will recess, and then after that, please join us in the reception, for the reception in the Grand Lobby. Again, thank you for joining us today. I'd invite you to receive this blessing. Friends, what we have received what we have, we have received from the good and faithful hand of our God. May you rest in the knowledge of his faithful goodness to you, beautifully displayed in the gift of his Son. May this foundation ground you on the mountaintop, comfort you in the valley. May the Lord bless your coming and your going with a profound sense of the nearness of his presence knowing that this goodness, this unfailing love of our God, pursues you. And for his glory, by the power of his spirit, keenly aware of our interconnectedness, may you share this goodness with those in your path. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Yeah.